Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 18th, 2022, could on 1140 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about this afternoon, including Hurricane Fiona south of Puerto Rico. What impacts is it expected to bring to portions of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola? And could the United States East Coast be impacted? Let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that, first of all, we have Hurricane Fiona south of Puerto Rico this morning. This is now being become an 80 mile per hour hurricane. We'll be moving off towards the west northwest here. We'll talk about this in just a second. And then we also have the tropical wave here coming off the coast of Africa. Not really much is expected out of this, but some model interest as this begins to enter the Caribbean within the next about seven to eight days. Now, if we look at Fiona this morning, we notice that again the storm has become a lot better organized. And what you first what kind of first jumps out to you is the fact that we have rotating convective bursts around this low-level circulation, which is right in here. And these deep convective bursts have been rotating around and helping to consolidate this low-pressure system further and continue to deepen it. And in fact, here, if we look at the recon plane that was in there from earlier uh, today, and it's still actually in there right now conducting a mission, we notice how the pressures have actually fallen in the last several uh, passes here from 993 to 988 to about 987. And so these uh, indicate that the storm is gradually intensifying and there is hurricane force flight level winds over here on the northern side of kind of the northeastern side. And then also on the northwestern side, we now have hurricane force flight level winds beginning to show up here. Now, if we look at the radar from San Juan this morning, we noticed that the storm structure is a lot better organized than what it was yesterday, and some very concerning trends have been occurring today. So first of all, we'll go ahead and, and stop this right here. We noticed that this morning, this is about a uh, little before 15 UTC time, we noticed that the structure this morning consisted of a partial eye wall here with deep convection rotating around the eastern third of the circulation we noticed that these training bands have been pumping into the USVI and Puerto Rico this morning and rotating around. And that has actually led to some pretty su substantial flooding issues already. And we've had several reports of trees down already because of the saturated soils and uh, some of the strong, strong wind here causing these trees to topple over very quickly. Now we notice in the recent frames here, if we go ahead and pause this, we notice that we've had deep convection develop over top of uh, kind of the northern part of the circulation this morning and is now trying to rotate around. Uh, this is still an open eye structure here. This is not closed at this point, which means intensification is going to be slow to occur until this can actually close off. But we notice how close this northern convective band is to the Puerto Rican island. We notice that this is the landmass right here. That's the border of Puerto Rico. And that is the top here of the intense convection. So we notice that it's probably only about 50 miles or so south of Puerto Rico, and it's actually seemingly to move a little bit northward. And we can see some of the, the surface obs in here indicate that we are certainly getting a northward jog in the overall uh, flow here. And so Fiona's moving a little bit north here before kind of resuming a uh, kind of a west-northwest heading. And so the further north this, this brings the circulation to Puerto Rico here, the worst of conditions for especially the southern part of Puerto Rico as the core uh, could potentially move inland uh, as time goes on. Now looking at the overall track forecast here again, Fiona is now a hurricane, sustained winds of 80 miles per hour moving off towards the west-northwest at 8. Uh, so the forward motion has slowed a little bit. This is expected to remain a hurricane for the remainder of its lifetime over the next five days, and it will likely pass very close to Hispaniola, where we have hurricane warnings in effect. And this is going to pass very close here to portions of the southeast Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos. And for that reason, we do have tropical storm watches that have been issued for uh, portions of the Turks and Caicos. This is still expected to pass a couple hundred miles to the east here, or maybe about 50 to 100 miles uh, but any deviation left or right could change the impacts to those areas. And then this is expected to become our first major hurricane as this potentially sets its sights on Bermuda, which is right here uh, within about four to five days. So we could be talking about impacts to Bermuda as time goes on. Now, locally impacts to the Turks and Caicos and the Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. Well, first of all, we do again have a hurricane warning that is in effect for the entire island of Puerto Rico as hurricane conditions are likely today into tomorrow. 
And then we also have a hurricane warning for the eastern half or the, really the eastern part here of Hispaniola. Tropical storm watches to the south and west. And then we have a tropical storm warning to the north here, again, for tropical storm conditions that are possible. If any deviation occurs and Fiona were to track over and take a track somewhat like that, again, that brings the core inland over Hispaniola. And that still remains a possibility today, although a track uh, that is something like that, maybe over the southern part of uh, Puerto Rico or just kind of scraping um, the Hispaniola coastline is possible. And then we also have to, again, these tropical storm watches for the uh, Turks and Caicos now uh, as tropical storm conditions are possible. Now, if we look at the overall risk impact, again, Puerto Rico still especially is going to be dealing with that very high impact risk. Again, we have a high risk of, trop of tropical cyclone impacts to the island here. And then again, the eastern part of Hispaniola, there's also high impacts there. And this is mainly to account again, first of all, the wind forecast, especially 70 to 80 mile per hour winds are expected on the southern part, especially the southwestern part of Puerto Rico today. And again, those extend into portions of Hispaniola as well. And even a sustained 50 mile per hour winds are, uh, could be expected well inland across portions of Hispaniola. And even the potential for 40 to 50 mile per hour winds on the far eastern part of the Turks and Caicos are also possible. The rainfall forecast though is the bigger story. Again, we have widespread amounts of five to 15 inches that are likely to occur, especially across Puerto Rico. A widespread 10 to 15 inch rain event is likely. And even across portions of eastern Hispaniola as well, rainfall potential could be as high as five inches, especially on the far eastern side here. And again, any deviation in this track will shift that rainfall forecast one way or another. So it's still something to be mindful of. But either way, significant heavy rainfall is expected for those areas. Now, if we look at the H4 forecast to see kind of just how strong this system might get in the short term, this is the H4 uh, 60 run valve for 8 a.m. this morning. We noticed that it's doing a pretty good job of capturing the lower pressures right now, 990, which was about an 8 o'clock in the morning. We'll move this out to about 11 here. And we notice that, again, the pressures are still around 990, not really falling a whole lot. Again, we notice that observably pressures are a little bit lower. But either way, again, it has the track just offshore Puerto Rico over the next couple of hours, dumping with it a very large amount of rainfall. We notice that, again, the relative humidity here uh, shows us that it, there's going to be this very significant moisture plume being pumped into Puerto Rico and the USVI. So very significant rainfall potential there uh, over the next couple of days. And then if we continue on with this forecast, again, this is going to scrape very close to Hispaniola here and the eastern part of the Dominican Republic. And so exactly how close this gate is going to matter, at least in the short term. Now, eventually here on models like the h -Worf, it does have it carrying the uh, cyclone pretty far to the northeast of the Turks and Caicos. But if we notice here, that wind field is going to be expanding at this particular point. And some models do diverge. If we actually take a look here, uh, for example, at the H-Mon here, uh, we notice that the H-Mon brings the core of Fiona very close or over the eastern part of the Turks and Caicos here. It's still a very small compact cyclone at this point, but again, it takes it on a little bit more of that westerly heading here, closer to the islands. And for that reason, there is a, a tropical storm watch that is in effect. And I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see some models even uh, shift a little bit further west towards the h -Mon solution here. And if we actually were to look at the HFAS here as well, uh, the, one of the hurricane uh, research models, again, the HFAS follows the h -Wharf pretty closely. Uh, the GFS forecast, again, is much of the same uh, with a tropical cyclone wind field expanding. So tropical storm conditions, two portions uh, of the, you know, really of the south southeastern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos are possible. Now, in the long range, again, this is likely to become our uh, first major hurricane of the season. There still will be a little bit of southwesterly vertical shear over top of the system here, uh, but this is likely not to uh, hinge, you know, really, not really to hinder significant development. We do have this trough here digging in across Florida. We'll have to see if that's going to create any um, 
hindering impacts to the cyclone, but we notice that this is still likely to become our first major hurricane of the season as it passes very close to Bermuda. Now, the overall forecast here, again, the, the forecast uncertainty has certainly decreased over the last couple of days. If we look at the GFS forecast, we're taking a look at the 500 millibar geopotential heights here. Uh, so first of all, here's our cyclone today, again, sitting south of Puerto Rico. We have a short wave trough that is located over New England at this point, and this big trough over here to the north. So we've seen that in recent runs, the, uh, the ridge basically has begun to erode back towards the east. And so this has allowed our storm to kind of round the corner of this ridge, and we notice that uh, in the coming days, uh, we notice again this little short wave trough that digs in across New England, and that's going to pick our storm up and try to turn it more towards the north here. Now, on the GFS forecast, this turn is a little bit slow to occur, and our storm actually just kind of does meander around for a little bit. Uh, but eventually, this incoming trough that is digging in across the uh, central part of Canada and the northern United States will finally be the kick out to sea that the storm needs. However, this could get pretty close to Bermuda as the GFS forecast shows. Uh, this could get very close to Bermuda as this trough right here catches this and carries it out to sea. And eventually this could even be a threat for portions of Newfoundland and Atlantic Canada as this kind of uh, pivots around this upper level low here. So we see how the spread is going to interact here. This is the super ensemble bled. Uh, this is about 139 different ensemble members. Uh, so this gives us a pretty good idea of what the track is going to be like here and the intensity. So we notice here that over the next couple of days, again, there is a little bit of short-term variability. There is still some weaker members that try to get it a little bit further west. Given the recent trends in the organization, these weaker members, I think, are becoming more and more obsolete. Uh, and then we try to see here within the next couple of days that, again, this gets pretty close to Bermuda and uh, the ensemble ellipse begins to grow. There's still some members here that are a little bit further towards the north and west here and closer to the Bahamas at this point, but a large clustering of the members here are centered in the central Atlantic at this point to the south-southwest of um, you know Bermuda. And then we can see here that, again, a large majority of members carry this very close to Bermuda. So for Bermuda impacts, uh, we could be talking about uh, impacts beginning within about four to five days or so at this point with tropical storm or hurricane conditions possible. I mean, notice again, there's still some outlier uh, members here that carry this towards Florida, but these are basically obsolete at this particular point. However, there is still a very substantial cluster of members at this point that are a lot slower with this turn uh, as this carries off towards the north and west. So we're going to have kind of a lot on our plate, but again, most of the members carry this further towards the northwest here, and there's still a very significant spread in terms of the overall uh, ellipse here, which means that, again, there is a wide range of uncertainty even still. Uh, we do have an upper level reconnaissance mission that will go out there today, so we'll see if that changes anything. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some later today.